Hi, I'm Tim Aubrey from DMAD Marine Mammals Research Association and I'm back today to continue our series of QGIS lessons which are absolutely free to everybody. Today we're going to be looking at how to make your own map. Um, we're going to dive into actually using QGIS for the first time. The first couple of lessons are a bit of theory which is not as exciting as the GIS itself but it's important that we understand that. So before we can go on and do the lesson, we need to download a couple of files. If you're on our website, then you can just download the files below. If not, then you just need to go to our website to download the files. So it's www.dmad.org.tr forward slash QGIS hyphen lesson hyphen three. And if you just download each of those files and we'll dive right in. Okay, so we've downloaded our files the next thing we do is we put them in a sensible folder it's always really important to keep on top of our files because we're going to have so many when we're using QGIS so I've made a file especially for this lesson QGIS lesson 3 and then I've even subdivided this into Montenegrin files because we're going to be working with the same files which we saw in the introduction to GIS lecture and you can see I've extracted each of these uh, for Windows, you just right click and sorry, I didn't right click on it. You right click and click extract all. It'll be different for Mac, but I'm sure you know how to do it. And then if we go inside one of these, so I'm going to go inside MNE underscore roads, it has a subfolder, and you can see we've got four files. So I'm going to start with the SHP file. The SHP file stands for shapefile, and shapefiles are one of the most common sorts of polygon file which we can we see in GIS. Shape files were actually invented by Esri and they are very slowly being phased out because you can see we've got to have four files each time but they're still probably the most common sort of polygon file that you'll find. So the first one's a shape file, the SHP file and that is the actual polygon. The next is the SHX file and that's a shape file extension file. That just helps us to load the shape file a bit faster. Uh, the next one is the PRJ file, and if you right click and uh, go on open with, and maybe open it with Notepad or WordPad, depending on what you've got. I'm going to open it with Notepad, and you can see that this is just a really sh short file which has got some information about our coordinate reference system. So, this is in WGS 1984. Don't worry too much about it at the moment, but it's it's worth knowing what that file is. So that just tells us some information about, about our coordinate reference system. And then the final one we have is a DBF file, so that's a database file, and that's where all of the information is stored really. So the SHP file is the actual polygon, but the DBF is the database file, and that's where the information is stored. Great, so once we've got that, I'm going to open up QGS. Um, yours will probably look quite different to this because I've got lots of different lessons and things that I've been working on, lots of different projects. You'll probably just have a new empty project, so double click on that. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a new layer. So if we go up to layer, click add layer, add vector layer because we're working with vector data. and then we get this box pop up. So we're going to go to vector data sets, we're going to click on the three dots here, and then we're just going to navigate through to where our data saved. And what I want you to do is go into MNE admin, and then just add the MNE underscore ADM zero, shape file. Now you'll notice there's even more files in here that's because we've got two sets of data within that uh, file. Once I've double clicked on the shape file I'm just going to click add and with a bit of luck it should appear behind. It might happen quicker or slower depending on how fast your computer is. Excellent. And you can just close that box by pressing the X. So, 
you can see we've got our shapefile here and you can see it's the outline country of Montenegro. Now I can go and double click on this box here, so where the yellow box is. This is our layers area in this section of the screen. If I double click on this yellow box, it will give me the editing tools. Now I'm not sure which yours will pop up on. I was on source last so it came on source. But we want to go to We want to go to Symbology. I don't know why it took me so long to find that. Um, and Symbology is the third one down. It looks like a paintbrush. And it gives us the options to change how our shape our looks. So I'm just going to go with simple green fill. It's representing land. So I'm just going to color it green. Excellent. So we've now got our first shape file in. Congratulations. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add another layer. So we're going to make our map a bit com more complicated. So same way, go to layer, add layer, add vector layer. And this time we are going to go to admin, or oh, sorry, mne underscore adm1. So we're going to add that. And you'll see that we can now see the different administrative areas of Montenegro. So ADM0 was just the country file, and this is now the municipalities. Um, and if we double click on that, I'm just gonna make that the same color again. Okay, so you can see we've got each of the municipalities. And the reason we've chosen Montenegro to work with is because that's one of our uh, where one of our projects is, the Montenegro Dolphin Research Project. It's one of our biggest projects, um, and so we're going to be focusing quite a lot on Montenegro. And you'll see that our new shapefile has come on into the layers section, and it's above ADM0. And how the layers work is that when it's above, then it's physically above our previous layer on the map. And we can turn the layer on and off by clicking this tick box. So you can see I've turned the ADM1 layer off and I can turn it back on with the tick box. Okay, brilliant. So I'm gonna to continue to add a couple more layers. So this time I'm gonna to go to layer, add layer, add vector layer, click the three dots, and I'm gonna go back into Montenegro files. I'm gonna choose water this time. And I'm gonna use water areas so select the water area shape file. I'm going to add that and close my box. And for some reason it's come up in this, well, it just randomly assorts the color. So we've got this ready purple color. So I'm just going to change that to simple blue fill and click apply and then OK. And now you can see it's a bit more representative of water. I'm going to do the same thing in the same folder to get the rivers. So you add vector layer again. And this time I'm going to go to water lines shape file. So I found that, click add, I close my window, and you see it's come up as these orange lines. So I'm going to choose a simple blue line. You'll notice because this is line data instead of shapefile data, we get slightly different options. And I'm going to click apply. If we drag our toolbox out of the way, our symbology out of the way, then we can see that the lines are possibly a little bit thick for what we want. So I'm going to go to where it says width, and I'm just going to decrease the width to 0 0.4. Then click apply. And OK. And that's better. We can now see the rivers a bit more clearly, um, but without them being overbearing on the map. And again, I can turn these on and off whenever I want just by ticking these boxes and unticking these boxes. So the final one I'm going to add are the roads. So this time, add layer, add vector layer. And we're just going to add the road. So MNE underscore roads and then find the shape file. 
and I've added that. And you can see we've got our roads. So it's getting a little bit complicated on the map. So I'm actually just going to call, turn the ADM layer one off just to make things a bit less confusing. And I'm going to go into the symbology of our roads, the same as I went in the rest of the time. This time I'm going to do something slightly different. So at the top where it says single symbol, I'm going to change it to categorized. And you'll see this brings up a different window. And then under value, I'm going to go to F code DES. And all F code DES does is it's the designation of whether we have roads or tracks. So we've got a file of both roads and tracks. And then we can go to classify down in the bottom left and you'll see that we've got roads and trails and we've got our symbology so just like when we clicked our line we can click again on the symbology and this time I'm going to go for a red for the roads and I'm going to make them the same size as my rivers so 0.4 again Now for my trails we're going to do something a bit different, we are going to select a, just a dark orange colour, just an orange colour and actually I'll tell you what, we'll make it a dashed line to make it even stand out even more, I'm going to decrease the width to 0.4 again and I'm going to change the colour to a brownie colour, okay so now when I hit apply and OK, you'll see that not only have I got my roads and tracks on screen, but I've also subdivided them within the folder as to whether they're red for roads or whether they're brown and dotted, dashed, sorry, for tracks, trails. So you can see quite quickly we've added a lot of information to our map. And again, we can turn the layers on and off. We can turn roads and trails off individually because they're categorized differently now. So you can see I can turn the roads off and on again. Or I can turn all the roads off at the same time. I can turn the rivers off, the lakes, add the administrative area back on. So there's really a lot that we can do with this. And we can have all the information on at the same time. And the information you display is really going to be dependent on your end user. Um, so that's something you really have to think about. We don't want to have too much information on the map, but it's all going to depend on what the map's been used for and also uh, what scale we're working at. So that's just something that comes with practice. We're going to do quite a few of these maps over just to get us used to it. Um, so go ahead and try it and let me know how you get on.